What's going on, everybody? It's another KFAB Baby, the NRW Ring Generals podcast with your boys. Yeah, we're a man down, but we're still the NRW 3-0s, 3-0s, 3-0s champion. A little tag tie right now. Uh, <laughs> myself, Webster, of course. You're trying to say it three legend. times for trios, three trios, trios. trios. Yes. <laughs> the legend, Kuya P, we're missing our third man, uh, Sean Mongo. But Kuya P, how you doing today, man? I'm good, man. It's been uh, very busy scheduling with a lot of things that you know that we do for the right. channel. I know for yourself, with everything you're doing with Sartorial and Geek and Webster Style, man, right. you know what it is. It's, it's one of those lot. days it's that it, it just hits you. Right. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be a short podcast uh, right. this week, folks. So let's talk about something just happened today at the time of this recording. You know, Kuya P and I are both old heads when it comes to wrestling, and we, we cut our teeth. We, we we started drinking a syrup in, in the eighties with wrestling with that rock and wrestling era and you and yes, I know the Iron Sheik predates that, but for us, like that feud with him and Hogan, um, the character persona that he created during that time and even forwarding to his alignment with Sergeant Slaughter, which broke all of our hearts back in the day. Uh we we lost a legend today. The Iron Sheik passed away. I believe he was 81 if i remember correctly yes, yes. 81 yep. 81 years old and if you have specifically been following iron chic online for the past couple of years he did not bite his tongue not at all um especially when it came to certain uh golden hair former each of vitamin wrestlers um <laughs> and and just the, the industry in general and he is someone who many drew a drew inspiration from and i will say you will see that especially a lot of our muslim born wrestlers of today have drawn a lot of inspiration from the bears he broke um in the business and really being even in kayfabe his authentic self from everything i understand so it's a, a true loss to have the you know the legends the icons those that you grew up with uh pass away but he is one that will be fondly remembered and i'm interested to see what sort of video package they throw up probably friday um for smackdown to honor him on uh on, on for wwe but he's definitely a legend man you know i, I think for me again those two points the whole few with hogan back in the day as well as the him coming back with Slaughter and again. I think it was Fiend with Hogan too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so Slaughter, I'm thinking wrestling yeah. when Slaughter yeah. became part of like it was like the whole Middle Eastern yeah, that, thing, Desert yeah. Storm stuff, man. Yeah, which was you look back on it now, it was like that was that was really perfect. That was yeah. that was perfect sports entertainment for the time. You know, with Slaughter being the only living GI Joe. So you had us kids that knew him not just from wrestling, but from G.I. Joe, and then to come back and then have Iron Sheik, and I think it was General Mustafa, whoever was with him as well. Yes. yes. And Sheik played that heel manager role. And obviously, you know, part of it was true with his disdain for Terry Boella. Uh, and he got a chance to live out some of that, even though obviously uh Hogan came out as the victor in the end of that whole saga. But it definitely lost to the industry, um, in my opinion, based on just the, the barriers he broke and the precedence that he set. Completely agree. Man, listen, Eldon, man, I don't know about you, bro, but yeah. Well, well, like you said, you loved him too. I I, I loved him as well. Um, but I don't know if I appreciate him as much as I should have back then. You know, he was because he he was set up as a villain, you know what I'm yeah. saying? The the heel, you know, that we all know. And it was a, a 80s kid growing up, you know, we were the way the presentation was set up. We were made to hate him. You know what I'm saying? Right, and and exactly. all of that. But he was also but he so he became like, even though we were made to hate him, he was so good that he was like Skeletor, yes. where yes. we where we you're supposed to like he man, but he's our living Skeletor who we love just to be so evil. And yes. so, you know. Yeah, man, he he played it up and did what he was supposed to do. And what I bring that up to say, as I grew older and being a person of color mm -hmm. and then learning yes. more about the man and what he went through and what he gave to the business, 
and just essentially taking what society put on him and making it made it a moneymaker for him. You know, right. you're, you're going to call me this. You're, you're going to make fun of uh, Iranians. You're going to shit on us and all that. When all he did was try to sh show love and give back to the sport, to to, to his country that mm -hmm. outcasted him. Ah, man, exactly. I, I don't know if you know his full story, but like I dug into that when I got older and like I developed such an appreciation for this man. And just because he was outspoken, right. and he spoke his truth. Um, but it also came from a lot of trying to give, but society just wasn't ready for that, especially for an Iranian person and, yes, and a Muslim person. Yeah, yeah, I learned so much about his story and what he did through his life, man, that it just is it's inspiring, dude, you know, to just, OK, America, you're going to shit on me. I'm going to shit right back and you're going to pay me money for it. And right. it's kind of <laughs> exactly being that he was. And as large as he was, and then you know what? You know, here's this golden boy, Hulk Hogan, like I said, Mr. Terry Bollier, that everybody loves yours, who's really a racist prick and an asshole. And I love that to the end, even today, he was like, fuck Hulk Hogan, fuck Hulk Hogan, fuck Hogan. Mm -hmm. Whenever he had a chance, when he became a Twitter icon mm -hmm. and was on Howard Stern, um, I'm going to miss this man, even though I've never met him in person. Um, but what he just showed to the world and gave to the world and just being an outspoken person of color in an in industry that's ruled by white men um, and just, just everything. And if, I'm sorry from white viewers, I'm, but Hey, y'all, y'all knows y'all's mistakes. And uh, this man wasn't going to allow you to not know that, but we can all do better and change. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? And that's, what's the most important thing. You know, if you did wrong, correct your wrongs and let's keep it moving and let's be real. And that's what I loved about Iron Sheik, man. And, uh rest in power man to the man bro like yeah dude i, I really dug his a, l a lot of the times when he would just speak out on shit and right. you, oh yeah definitely yeah see, I, he was brave as fuck because who's gonna fuck with a sheik yeah, exactly you know? nobody's so honest and speaking of that i don't know about you you know we, we're we're very similar in age and growing up you know i'm pretty sure you, you and your friends y'all played out and y'all mimic all the root moves when you were wrestling straight the up last move you want to be put in is a camel clutch <laughs> real talk man <laughs> last yeah. move like yeah. the camel clutch and the figure four like the two moves in real life like nah you can you can do everything else <laughs> but the camel clutch it's like nah man and, and yeah. that man i'm not sure if he was a first to use it but he's definitely one that made it famous yes he did man dude was just powerful beyond yeah. measure um i think he like ran like olympics and stuff before he you know went to wf because he was a mm -hmm. real wrestler and right the truth's art of the art form, you know, and uh, man, and just powerful. Do you ever watch that show, WWE's Treasures, uh, Most Wanted Treasures? They're yes. like going for yes, stuff. I've seen that from time Did you time see the that. episode where they're looking for those, that like Billy Club type object that he would, you know, uh, both on? No, arms. I hadn't seen it. No. It was like a bat, but it was like really weighted. Right. And it was something that he would use to strengthen his arms and like not, it, uh, and it takes a real powerful dude to do that. Most cats couldn't even do it. But wow. it's like a, a big old bat, uh, you know, and, and he's holding one on and just he was like, uh, uh, get it and crazy. But they uh, yeah, they hunted for one of those things because it was one of his big iconic things during his run uh, coming up to just show how strong he was. That that dude was insanely strong, man. Uh, I, I really wanted to have a chance to meet him. You know, we do the conventions and the shows. Right. Um, I think there was one opportunity that I could have had a chance to meet him, but I didn't. Ah uh, man, I rest in power to this brother, man. I, I he was one of the wrestlers that the, the icons from that time period of us being fans of wrestling that I really wanted to meet. Right. And uh, I'm just sad that I won't ever have that opportunity, man. But uh, rest in power to that brother. Yeah, rest um, in power, Iron Sheik, man. Man, Sheik. Yeah, dude. Let's uh let's get some uh quick points of uh all yes. things going on in the wrestling world real quick. Um, I want to say this, and, and this is where I am continued to be proven wrong about some of the story direction of NXT. I was wrong about the Braun Breaker heel turn, in my opinion. I like what they're doing. I like this evolution. He called out Seth Rollins the other day. The oh, show up wow. at NXT. Like I he, they now put him in a program. Yeah, I haven't seen an episode since Battleground. So what well, that's tell, tell me what's been happening? Well, so I, he called him out? And he called him out, and I think it was a digital short or a digital, but he called out Seth Rollins. He attacked Elo Dragon off, so now he's going to get in a full program with him. I mean, he's growing his beard out and everything, trying to look like a real badass. I'm like, okay. Um, so 
um, Road Dog, who Shawn Michaels, whoever run NXT, I was wrong. I I was I was I was wrong. I I will definitely give you that. Um, another point. Uh, they start announcing for um Forbidden Door and Brian Danielson challenged the Rainmaker Okada. At Forbidden Door, and I'm like. <laughs> Oh, and I think it's Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay for the uh, U.S. title, if I remember correctly. Okay. I think those are two that have been officially announced. I was like, We're building oh. up those matches now for uh, Forbidden Door. Now, that's, those are matches. Those are okay. definitely matches that you want to see. <laughs> Especially at Brian Jameson or Cattle Match. I'm like, just name alone. Like, like that sounds like that's going to be amazing. Got you. Man, so it's it's getting exciting now. We're finally hearing that um, uh, that that's coming up. Um, if I can go back to NXT, so like I yeah. said, I haven't c- caught up, but I know or I heard through the interwebs, you know, since uh, our last recording, Mustafa Ali and Corbin. Yeah, oh yeah, I was going to bring that up too. Yeah. Down. Yeah. What do you think well, about that? I don't know what's up because they brought down him and Baron Corbin, and yeah, it doesn't seem like they brought down. They were doing double duty. Well, at least Mustafa Ali I thought they were going to do something with Carol Corbin because they were making him lose again. I thought they were going back to the whole broke Corbin thing again, but now you know he's what? back down. Corbin is a good utility player. Corbin is a character that the fans hate. Yeah. He does his job. I will yeah. never knock him for that um, at all. I mean, so him going to NXT, it's kind of mirroring what they did with even Braun Breaker, or especially them bringing down... Um, Ziggler, you know, an established yeah. main event guy, um, main roster guy, really to him to feud with. It helps to um, put him over even more, but also it brings that attention to the NXT champion where to those who don't watch NXT, in, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So I think that's a very smart thing. Baron Corbin may not be the best guy. From a name perspective, like a Dolph Ziggler, a former world champion. But I mean, I think it's going to be a good match when they do come to blows for real, for real. Um, as far as Mustafa Ali, put him in that North American title mix. That's going to be a hell of a match. I mean, we we had that match at Battleground with um, Gacy, Wesley, and um, is it Trent Severn? Oh, Tyler, yeah. I thought it was Tyler Bate. Tyler, Tyler Bate, yeah. Tyler Trent Bate, Severin Wesley, his, and Gacy. His partner, yeah. yeah. Um, from Mustache Mountain. I mean, that was a hell of a match. And just adding Mustafa Malia in the mix. I again I see it the same way. It's a way of really putting over Wes Lee with an established main roster person, Mick Carter, that that's going to really give a hell of a match. Yeah. I agree with that, but I'm like, I'm the, what we've all been saying about Mustafa Ali, so much potential, right? That they never capitalized on, and then you know he, but and we've so, and I, well, I don't know about you, but then so he was like, if 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 we've been tracking, like he was like, well, he wanted to go, but WWE wouldn't let him go, right? And so they did like two different kind of like storylines they're try to, but then they like failed out on it, right? They didn't WWE didn't follow through with it, and then we have this great match against Gunther. Right. right, and now we put them down. I'm like, what are they? I I just feel bad from the, the optics of it as an outside fan of knowing this cat can do something. Mm-hmm. They just I, f- I feel bad for the brother, man. And I don't know, you know, we're gonna use him to get other, which is, I, I, you know, the the optics. Yeah. And like, I, yeah, I think it's really bad in this case if he does get that opportunity at the North American and loses. I think that's where it really hurts him because. I think on the main card, he's a main roster. He's a a great utility player. Um, It's just hard to strap a title on him right now the way they have. I mean, Gunther is just doing so damn well. Oh, I completely agree. I don't think he should win, but... Yeah, and even the the U.S. title. Yeah. he's They're not positioning that, so there's really nowhere else. There's no title they could put on him, and really, in my opinion, based on what they've done, not saying they can't do it, but based on what they've done, they can make him a credible champion. So taking them down to NXT to do double duty like they're doing with the uh, women's championships, um, the NXT uh, women, uh, tag, women's tag team championships, I think that's smart, but only if he wins. And he wins 
but also goes into maybe a few like a best of three with um wesley and that way maybe wesley also gets a title back but one ali now has been a champion in wwe two it shows that he can carry a title and really perform as a title holder um i think that's the way they should go now again NXT has proven me wrong in, in some of their decisions lately, so we will see what they yeah. do. But I think if there's ever opportunity to put a belt on Ali and, and at least run with it for a little while, this is the time and this is a perfect opportunity, in my opinion. No, we'll see. The, I, I, yeah, I, I think they need to at least give him something for a little while because it's going to just... I don't like the look. I, well, not perfect. just that. Also, have him win it, but have him defend it on Raw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they had Solo with the belt. And I feel like he wrestled with the belt, but he defended. But then you know they had the whole thing. Where, well, they took it away from him. I still don't understand why they did that. But have him win the belt, defend it on Raw, like really elevate their profile, and then have people go back to NXT, and then maybe he eventually loses it. But he's going to put on great matches, and I think he's you put that belt on him. He's you know even like a month or two. It doesn't have to be a long title reign. Yeah, I think that they really can get some good TV and really yeah. elevate his stock if they do that. Agreed. So NXT, we talked to you know we touched on that AEW uh, with some of the Forbidden Door stuff. Any yeah. uh, uh, other highlights we want to go yeah. before we call it in uh, a week on this episode? Uh, since we have short time this week, man. Um, the Damian Priest. Um, Seth Rollins match was pretty good. I enjoyed that. But I, I expected that when they announced that. Seth is going to put on a good show. And I have been a fan of Damian Priest since he was Punishment Martinez. And I'm happy to see him really spread his wings, so to speak, and to really get some wrestling in. Um, I, I think early on, he's kind of lost some of that. Not to his fault, just the way it, it, it worked. And then Judgment Day, now he's wrestling so to speak, and you're going to get that with Seth Rollins. Even though he lost and we knew he was going to lose, it's a way of lose when to lose. It's a way of making Seth look strong, giving him a good title defense, but also making Damian Priest look like he's, you know, definitely someone you should think about in that world title picture, even in a loss, in my opinion. That's all for me right now. Okay. You know what? I remember one last thing, because we so did have since our last episode – the 1,000th day of Roman Reigns on uh, SmackDown last week. Oh, yeah. And that uh, celebration, per se, mm -hmm. the latest uh, installment of that Bloodline story right there. The biggest soap opera running uh, next to Young and Restless. What do you think of that little bit of juice we got there? To keep, and and I, how are you feeling with it? I mean, I'm still rocking with it. I mean, yeah. I'm not bored of it yet. And honestly, I think we all knew Solo was going to do what Solo did. The, he's solo. He's solo Sokoa for a reason. He always said he runs alone. He said that from the beginning. Uh, so he's going to do what's best for solo. But I, uh, the now, I, I think the now, the crystallization that Usos are now no right. longer in the excommunicado. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think it's very juicy. I, I really like that we've established that now. I'm psyched for SmackDown, man, and and, yep. and uh, tuning back in with some of the stuff because I haven't watched Raw, y'all. Uh, I was telling Eldon, you know, I got a lot of catching up to do right now because we've been so busy with everything. So we'll have more of a show for y'all next week, guys and gals, or they, thems, whatever you are. We love y'all. Uh, we'll be back next week. Um, Eldon, uh, anything uh, to promote before we sign off out of here? Uh, yeah, I got a new interview with Camilla Clutch just dropped as well as a uh, couple uh, unboxings as well as a fragrance review all have dropped in the past week since uh, we last recorded. So check them out. Webstyle magazine. Actually, they're on webstyle.com right now. So check them out there. There you go. Show love to my brother, Webster Style. Coolest brother in fashion and fragrance and everything. My man. And of course, gaming and just everything. He's he killing it. I, I'm trying to be like him when I grow up. <laughs> my man, Rosa Sal. For me, it's the boy, the legend Kuya P on Twitter, TikTok, IG, Hive. And of course, uh, here at the NRW and Annalise Wednesday, where nerds rule the world. John Mongold, you better be uh, back here next week. We got more to talk about. There's a lot of things. A lot of things. But we'll be back next week, y'all. We out. Webster Style, your boy, Kuya P. Peace. You 
come in my face, I'm gonna fight you. Well, you're not gonna bust a nut anytime we're in the ring. I'm gonna get off by cranking your knob just a little beyond the breaking point. When I get my hands on you, I'm gonna eat your ass like a pot of collard greens, baby. I'm gonna stretch his ass like it's never been stretched before. You can hide behind that commissioner's stuff just so long until I jerk a knot in your ass. And if you don't think I'm big enough, and you grab a hold of me, and you'll know that I'm growing, my man. Within your hands, I will get as big as I need to be, as big as I need to be to do the job on you. The Rock just jerked Helmsley off. There's one part of our bodies that's soft, and it ain't soft all the time if you catch my men. I'm going to come on you like nobody's ever come on you before. Just you and I getting it on like two men should do. Oh, no. No, that, that, that's it, Sarah. For you, boy. I'm coming hard.